Good afternoon, students. Welcome back to the biology classes. So already we have started yesterday. We have started with the structural organization in animals. Okay, another way we have completed morphology, anatomy. Maximum it is reduced. So directly we are going for the structural organization in animals. Okay. So here in the structural organization, epithelial tissues we have started. Types of epithelial tissues, their general characters we have studied. And again, this epithelial tissue we will continue the epithelial tissues. So epithelial tissues based on their structure and shape. Yesterday we have made some list. Okay, simple epithelial tissue, simple epithelial tissue, compound epithelial tissue. These are again further divided. Okay, simple means what? Compound means what? Simple epithelial tissues are nothing but the tissues made up of single layers. Okay, the tissues made up of a single layer. Here in compound epithelium, the tissues are made up of many layers. Based on the presence of layers, the epithelial tissue are of two types, simple epithelial tissue, compound epithelial tissues. If we talk about the single, means epi, simple epithelial, they are very simple, having only one single layer. If you take compound epithelial, the tissues are made up of more different types of tissues, layers are present. So now this simple epithelial tissue, are having what simple epithelial tissue are just we will discuss the squamous epithelium which we are going to study squamous epithelium cuboidal epithelium then columnar epithelium and ciliated epithelium and here compound epithelium we are going to study about glandular epithelium okay we are going to study glandular epithelium one by one we will discuss the tissues, squamous epithelium, two marks questions in practicals they were asking. So they are important for two marks. What you have to know is squamous epithelium, in squamous epithelium you should know about the structure. Just one line you can uh, explain about the structure of the squamous epithelium. After that, just after that location, where these squamous epithelium are located. So after location, next we have to explain their function, structure, location and function you remember. Okay, now let us start with the squamous epithelium. Okay, let us start with the squamous epithelium. So the, the squamous epithelium, if you observe the squamous epithelium, they are actually having irregular boundaries. Just I will erase this and I will start with the squamous epithelium. Let 
let us list out the functions characters of the squamous epithelium so the characters of this squamous epithelium are these are flattened irregular boundaries so if you see the squamous having flattened irregular irregular boundaries are present here okay arranged in the form of what arranged in the form of thin thin layer okay thin layer next so these will be if you see the cells they will be absorbed in the form of polygonal shape they absorbed in the form of polygonal shapes after this next after flattened irregular boundaries they are arranged in the thin layer and uh, polygonal shapes okay they are absorbed means if you view the cells they will be like a polygonal now they are also called as pigment epithelium okay they are also called pigment epithelium because they are arranged like a tiles okay the arrangement of the pigment epithelium it will be resembling like a tiles on floor so hence they are called as pigment epithelium are also called as what pigment epithelium and they are very delicate they are location if you take so location if you take they are thin layer so they are present in very delicate part Epithelium. They look like polygonal. They are also called pigment epithelium. 
they are arranged like the tiles arrangement on the floor and the location they are very delicate part they are present to mouth into finger alveoli pericardium alveoli that is so and in some sort it function as diffusion boundaries the boundaries will absorb so act as the diffusion boundary helps in protection especially to the tongue the covering of the tongue is also made up of squamous epithelium skin is having squamous but they are having many layers for protection to not to lose the water okay not to lose the water next let us see the characters of the cuboidal epithelium okay let us see the cuboidal epithelium second one later we will draw okay first we will complete the uh, structure structure location as well as the function coming to the structure of cuboidal epithelium coming to the structure of cuboidal epithelium so the cells the layer of the cells which look like cube like cells hence the name itself indicates cuboidal epithelium the cells are like a cubes okay and they appears in the form of squares they appear in the form of a square and on the surface they will look like hexagonal structure they are cube like some are square and the boundaries if you see they look like a hexagonal they look like a hexagonal they appear as the surface will appear three surface will appear what shape hexagonal in shape it forms germinal epithelium so before going to the locations they are found where they are seen the coming to the locations the locations are let us list out the structure they look like square hexagonal or cube like structures okay coming to the location where they are found they are found in kidney thyroid vesicle kidney thyroid that is vesicles glands okay in the glands also we can see and they are also perform the germinal epithelium in gonads they also form germinal epithelium in gonads okay they are also seen in the germinal epithelium germinal epithelium is the other location in kidney thyroid vesicles glands as well as germinal epithelium lining the germinal epithelium of the gonads are made up of cuboidal epithelium kidney like nephrons okay in the translator you will be coming to know the tissues okay just a location and how to remember next coming to the function so what is the function so function first function is they give mechanical support 
and in kidney they are present okay in kidney they are present so they are going to form kidney has microvilli okay which is helpful for absorption some electrolytes water some ions will be what absorbed by the microvilli okay which are usually present in the what tubular epithelium they are present in the kidney okay they are present in the kidney next after this so these are the function microvilli are present in the kidney they are in the form of finger like projection finger like projections okay right like in this way the finger like projections are present which is helpful for absorption in the kidney okay next after this next we will see columnar epithelium understood so cuboidal epithelium the word itself indicates cube means the cells look like cubes squares or the free surface also we can see in the form of hexagonal that is the structure what is the location kidney thyroid glands germinal epithelial lining is also especially in the gonads we can see the location function mechanical support it will give okay because epithelial means support and microvilli especially in the kidney microvilli are there which are like finger like projection which are helping in absorption okay they are helpful in absorption next let us see third structure the structure of columnar let us see the structure of columnar they are tall and slender like how is the structure they are tall and slender like structure and if you take the location of the nucleus the nucleus are located towards the base nucleus are located towards the base okay columnar column like structure are present correct the nucleus is located towards the base one side not center they are located towards the base tall slender like structure nucleus is located towards the base okay this is a about the structure of the columnar cells coming to the function so they are three surface of the microvilli okay same they are present at the three surface surface of micro Villi, they are located where on at the free surface. They are location of the columnar epithelium. Location is microvilli, free surface of micro. In the spine also have microvilli. Kidney is also having the microvilli. Next location, they are also present in the lining of the stomach and in the spine. lining of stomach and intestine okay free surface of microvilli lining of stomach and intestine they are also present okay next coming to the location after location 
only one function is there that is the function is absorption what is the function the function is absorption understood okay so columnar we have completed now so what is this how is columnar column like tall or slender column pillar like structures are present nucleus is present towards the base okay and location if you take free surface of microvilli microvilli usually seen on the lining of the stomach to push the food and for absorption and also in intestine inner layer of the intestine i think this is a tube of the intestine here we can see microvilli okay these are villi these are having the minute thread like structure which are called microvilli this will helpful for absorption of the digested food okay so this is the helpful for absorption okay they are helpful for the absorption next we will go for the fourth type of epithelial tissue that is ciliated epithelial tissue Next one, ciliated, cuboidal epithelial. The structure of the ciliated Okay, structure. So these ciliated is present on the surface, the surface of cuboidal and columnar. Okay, the free surface of the cuboidal and columnar is presence of what? Presence of ciliated epithelium think this is a cells okay here the thread like structure which are called cilia okay microvilli are present in the intestine and stomach and kidney cilia are the thread like structure which are having on the surface on the surface of cuboidal and columnar okay they are attached to the cuboidal and columnar so that is the fig uh, hair like these are ciliated hair like protoplasmic how it is this is a thread like okay hair like having protoplasmic outgrowth they are the protoplasmic outgrowth this is a structure how structure the free surface of cuboidal and columnar having the ciliated hair like protoplasmic outgrowth these are the protoplasmic outgrowth which are coming out from the which are coming out from the cuboidal or columnar epithelium where they are located especially they are located in the trachea the locations are that is in trachea that is in the lungs and the fallopian tube to push to flow the gametes the trachea is present okay fallopian tube also is having the ciliated epithelium and the next one nephrons also is having one more location nephrons Okay, coming to the function. 
what will be the function it will helps to move the mucus some gametes etc trap the dust particle okay these are the functions of the ciliated epithelium what is the structure the free surface of the cuboidal or columnar the thread like structure of growth which are called protoplasmic outgrowth okay location they are present in lungs that is in the trachea branches from the lungs they are called trachea okay fallopian tube in female ovary ovary is having hand like structure which is called fallopian tube oviduct oviduct is also lined by cilia to move the gametes egg will be moving sperm will be moving with the help of this thread like structure nephrons that is in the kidney for absorption and all they are helpful for moving okay now coming to the function they are helpful to move the mucus mucus is that layer which is present in the inner surface of the tubes which will trap the bacteria so mucus is also passing lining and the gametes are also moving there and to trap the dust particles okay to trap the dust particles these are the functions now let us see the diagram of the squamous cuboidal and columnar the diagram we have left out just we will draw that diagram One second.
क्यूबर्डल So these are all given in your NCRT. Some extra are there, okay, which we have discussed in yesterday's class. Some stratified epithelium. How they look? The stratified epithelium, they look like the squares. Stratified epithelium next pseudo stratified. We have discussed this pseudo stratified and all right.
these are the pseudo stratified the free surface is not boundary is not absent so you can see here squamous epithelia having very thin layer single layer cuboidal cube like cells you can see here okay cube like cells and then here you can see column like cells and nucleus is located towards one end and after that you will get ciliated the pillar like cells arrangement of the ciliated cells for absorption moving the gametes nucleus this is a stratified epithelium and pseudo stratified the cells are not reaching up to the boundaries okay so that is called pseudo stratified understood they are pseudo stratified so this is about the diagram about the structure and all next next we will start with the ciliated completed right next we will start with the glandular epithelium okay next we will start with the just we will see the characters of the glandular epithelium let us see simple epithelium we have completed now compound epithelium compound epithelium okay so in that compound epithelium let us start with the glandular epithelium let us start with glandular epithelium glandular epithelium so the cells which are modified for secretion okay the cells which are meant modified for secretion they are like glands if you take different type of glands are located pituitary gland adrenal gland thyroid gland what is the function of that they will secrete something they will secrete some chemicals what are they hormones right so these glandular epithelium specially located in the glands Okay, that is located in the glands. So they are. They also comes under simple only. Okay, they also comes under simple glandular epithelium. So simple glandular epithelium. They are. They may be. What? They may be modified for secretion. They may be cuboidal, or they may be columnar. the glands either they will be made of columnar or they will be made up of what cuboidal epithelial cells then these glandular are having first unicellular these glandular are having unicellular they are having unicellular and the glands are also multicellular unicellular as well as the multicellular glands unicellular they are what unicellular they are single goblet 
cells. These are unicellular and multicellular cells. They are simple, single goblet and isolated glandular cells. Single isolated glandular cells which is called as goblet cells. They are called as goblet cells. Okay. Of and especially with of elementary enam. Of elementary enam. So glandular are modified for only for secretion. And then the cells, glandular cells are just made up of pubertal or columnar. Okay. Glandular cells are of two types. Unicellular, multicellular. Unicellular, they are single, I separated, isolated, glandular cells, okay, which are called goblet cells, which are located in the elementary canal. Elementary canal means mouth. Okay, the mouth is made up of unicellular glandular. Saliva is secreting in our mouth with the help of salivary glands. So, elementary canal is made up of what? Unicellular, having goblet cells in the elementary canal. Multicellular, they are present in the what? They are present in the clusters. What is the difference here? These are present in single. Okay, these are present in clusters, glandular cells. They are present in the form of clusters, glandular cells. Okay, cells. Which is the example? This is in elementary canal. Okay, these are in um, survival plants. Okay, unicellular, it is present in the form of single. Multicellular, it is clusters, is nothing but groups. Okay, bundles, clusters, glandular, this is a single isolated glandular. This is clusters glandular. This is located in elementary canal, this is located in the salivary glands. Okay, this is called elementary canal, which are called goblet cells. Unicellular are called what type of cells? Always remember, goblet cells. They are called as one object to type question they may ask. Next. After that, exocrine. Now the glands has been divided into, okay, we will discuss glandular types in the later classes. Okay, thank you.